In this video, I'll talk about the fully saturated CEF model when there are two binary regressors, specifically x1 and x2. So they can each have value 0 or 1. Now the key to understanding this model is understanding the link between the CEF, this m of x1 and x2, that is the conditional mean of y given these x values, the link between the CEF and the regression function, in particular these betas, the regression coefficients. So when there's only two binary regressors, there's only four possible combinations of x1 and x2. And they can both be zero. X1 can be zero, and X2 can be one, or one zero, or one one. So we can imagine splitting up the overall population into four subpopulations based on individuals X1 and X2 values. So you could imagine here the whole box is the full population and then here's x1 and x2. And so this top left rectangle is the subpopulation for which x1 is 0 and x2 is also 0. And then here's the subpopulation 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And you can imagine taking, let's say, this 0, 0 subpopulation, taking all the individuals in that subpopulation and looking at the mean y variable, uh, so the conditional on being in this subpopulation, the mean outcome. And that's what this m of 0, 0 represents. That's what the CEF tells us fundamentally, is what's the mean y for this particular subpopulation. Similarly, M01 tells us if we look at this subpopulation of individuals, what's their mean Y? And similarly, M10 and M11 tells us the mean Y for those subpopulations. So we have these four CEF values corresponding to the four subpopulations defined by the x1, x2 combination. Now those CEF values have clear descriptive meaning, if not necessarily causal. And so it would be nice if we can understand these regression coefficients, the betas, in terms of the CEF. And since there's only four possible combinations of x1 and x2, what we can do is just plug in each combination over here and then plug in those x1 and x2 values into the regression function. And that will help us begin to link the two together. So starting with the easiest one, if we plug in 0 for x1 and x2, we'll get a 0 here. And beta 1 times 0, that's just 0, so that disappears. Similarly, we plug in x2 is 0, and beta 2 times 0, that disappears. Uh, and then the third term, we have two zeros, so that clearly disappears. And all we're left with is beta 0. So the regression intercept, the beta 0 parameter, we can interpret that as the mean y for this 0, 0 subpopulation. So a common mistake is to interpret that uh, beta 0 as some sort of overall unconditional mean, but that's not what it represents. It represents only the mean for this particular 0, 0 subpopulation. Now moving on, if we plug in 0 and 1, again, this first term will 0 out because we have 0 for x1. And that third term will still 0 out because we have a 0 right in the middle and we're multiplying all these together. 
but now we have a one for x2, so we pick up this beta two term. So altogether we have beta zero, the intercept, plus beta two now. So beta zero plus beta two is the mean of this subpopulation. Similarly, if we plugged in one zero, it's sort of symmetric um, instead of the first term zeroing out, this other term zeroes out. The third term again zeroes out because if either x1 or x2 is zero, since we're multiplying them, that zeroes out. So we're left with beta zero plus beta one being the mean of this subpopulation down here. Now, the fourth one gets a little complicated. So before we tackle that, let's try to see how we can interpret beta one and beta two. So what we can do if we want to get, for example, beta two isolated, is we can take this beta zero plus beta two and then subtract beta zero. And that'll just leave beta two over here on the right hand side. And then over here on the left hand side in the CEF world, that means we're taking the mean of this subpopulation and subtracting the mean of this subpopulation. So beta two is the difference between the mean y for the zero one subpopulation and the zero zero subpopulation. So again, a common mistake in interpreting beta 2 is to think that it sort of represents the overall uh, difference between having x2 equal to 0 and 1, sort of comparing both of these subpopulations with both of these subpopulations. Uh, but we can see from the equations that's not true. That's not what beta 2 represents. It's only looking at the difference between this top right subpopulation and the top left subpopulation. Similarly, to isolate beta one, we can take beta zero plus beta one and subtract beta zero. So that is over here on the left hand side, taking m one zero and subtracting m zero zero. In other words, looking at the difference between the mean of this subpopulation and this subpopulation. So again, it's not comparing all of the x1 equals 1 individuals with all of the x1 equals 0 individuals. It's only looking at these two subpopulations where x2 is equal to 0 in both subpopulations. Now, take a deep breath as I just did. <laughs> We're going to go look at the fourth equation here, m11. So if we plug in x1 equal to 1 and x2 equal to 1, then we'll pick up beta 1, we'll pick up beta 2. And even in this very last term here, x1 times x2 is 1 times 1 it's equal to 1. So we'll also get beta 3 this time. So this is the only time we can get beta 3 is when both x1 and x2 are equal to 1, when that uh, interaction term is equal to 1. So now we get all of the regression coefficients, beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. Now we already have a nice interpretation for beta 0, beta 2, and beta 1. How can we isolate beta 3? Well, we could start by getting rid of beta 0 and beta 1, as we see we have that here. So if we subtract this third equation from the fourth equation, we'll be left with just beta 2 plus beta 3. So in other words, if we take m11 and we subtract m10, that's equal to beta 2 plus beta 3. Now we just need to get rid of the beta 2 which we saw we could isolate before by subtracting the first equation from the second equation. So we need to take the fourth equation, subtract the third equation, and then subtract the difference between the second and first equations. 
so that's what is written out a little lower down here. Uh, so here's again that fourth equation. Make the cursor a little easier to see. This is the fourth equation minus the third equation together minus the second equation minus the first equation. So that's where this phrase difference in differences comes from because the fourth minus the third, that's a difference. And then the second minus the first, that's also a difference. And then we're taking the difference between those two differences. That's the difference in differences. Um, and you'll also notice you can just switch the M10 and the M01 algebraically, it's equivalent. Um, it just depends how you want to think about the interpretation. If you want to think about uh, comparing the uh, bottom right and bottom left subpopulations compared to the top right and top left, or comparing the bottom right and the top right compared to the bottom left versus the top left. So a lot of times, as discussed later in the chapter, X1 is an indicator of a treated group, and X2 is a time period indicator of before and after. Um, so you can think of the difference and differences as either looking at the treated group taking the uh, after minus before difference and then subtracting the untreated groups after minus before mean difference. Or you could think about looking in the after period, looking at the treated untreated difference and then subtracting the treated untreated difference in the before period. And that's discussed a little more later uh, in this little diagram here. So here's the fourth equation minus the third equation, and then the second equation minus the first equation. Um, so you can see that's beta two is this height here. And then that fourth minus third, that was beta two plus beta 3. And so when we take this beta 2 and we subtract it off of beta 2 plus beta 3, this remaining gap here is beta 3. Um, and later it also talks about in this chapter about interpreting this point here as sort of a counterfactual uh, from a parallel universe. Uh, but I will end the video here and I hope that helps give some understanding of this fully saturated two binary regressor CEF.